You know that saying, it costs nothing to be kind. Yeah, well, turns out sometimes it can cost a pretty penny. But there are some amazing people out there who don't mind paying the price. And Francois Rehani is definitely one of them. This 27-year-old entrepreneur from Dallas, Texas had a dream of owning a restaurant, but he also wanted to help out foster youth. So he came up with a genius idea to do both at the same time. And that's how Lala Land Kind Cafe was born, a place where you can grab a delicious meal and support a great cause at the same time. Francois saw the struggles that foster youth face, and he wanted to do something to help. And let me tell you, he's doing it in the most delicious way possible. So, how did this all come about? Well, let me tell you the story of how Rehani started the most unconventional cafe ever. So, who is Francois Rehani? Francois Rehani is an American entrepreneur and CEO of La La Land Kind Cafe, which was founded in 2019 in Texas. Although born in Los Angeles, his family relocated to Mexico, where he spent most of his childhood. We don't know much about his time growing up, but what we do know is that he's one of the most empathetic folks we have seen in a while. It must be something in the tacos. He came from a long line of business-oriented people, so it's not surprising that he was brought up to be business-inclined. In fact, one of his biggest dreams was to open a huge restaurant and after years of hard work, he finally made it happen. But as they say, life is what happens when you're busy making plans, and things didn't quite turn out the way he thought they would. Here's how it all happened. Believe it or not, Rehani started hustling at the ripe old age of seven. Yep, you heard me right, seven. And his first job was selling calendars door to door in his neighborhood. Can you even imagine? And that was just the start. Between middle and high school, he did all sorts of odd jobs to make some extra cash. I'm talking the works, delivering newspapers, mowing lawns, you name it. The guy was a real go-getter even back then. At just 18 years old, he was already a Volkswagen salesman in the corporate world. Yeah, he may have been young, but he learned some valuable lessons about hard work and dedication that he carried with him throughout his life. Now, fast forward to college. He started off at the University of Southern California, USC but ended up dropping out and heading over to Southern Methodist University, SMU, in Texas. And even though he eventually dropped out of SMU, too, he discovered something about himself that changed everything. That discovery was what led him to start the amazing La La Land Kind Cafe. Back in 2017, when Francois was still a student at SMU, he decided to chase his dream and open a restaurant. And not just any restaurant, mind you, but one that served up Hawaiian cuisine, a first in Texas. He called it Pac, and it quickly became famous for its delicious bowls of diced raw fish that looked like sushi. But here's the thing. Even though he'd achieved his dream, Francois found that it wasn't as fulfilling as he thought it would be. So he kept searching for something more. And then, something happened that changed everything. A friend invited him to something that really put things in perspective, and that's where things get interesting. So, Francois got an invite from his buddy Aaron Jesberger, to check out this program hosted by the Dallas chapter of Court Appointed Special Advocates, CASA. Basically, these guys are all about protecting kids and making sure they have a decent childhood. And every year they hold these conferences, where they talk about different issues affecting foster youth. So Francois went to one of these conferences, and the theme was all about what happens to foster kids once they turn 18 and age out of the system. And let me tell you, it was eye-opening. Different foster youth got up and shared their experiences, and man, it was rough. A lot of them had been separated from their parents at a young age and bounced around from one foster home to another. No stability, no consistency. It's heartbreaking. Not only do kids in foster care have to deal with all sorts of instability, but once they hit 18, many of them get the boot and end up on the streets, where they become easy targets for all kinds of shady characters. Drug dealers, pimps, you name it. It's a tough situation all around. But you want to know the real kicker? Francois was blown away when he found out that more than half of the homeless population in the state had been in foster care at some point. I mean, seriously, that's a crazy statistic. It just goes to show how broken the system can be and how much work there is to be done to help these kids out. As Francois sat through the conference, every speaker just made things worse and worse until Francois couldn't take it anymore. These kids had such harrowing experiences, and he couldn't just sit by and watch from the sidelines. He had to do something. So he spent the next two weeks learning everything he could about the foster care system in the country. And let me tell you, what he found was not pretty. There were all sorts of issues. Improper screening for foster parents, inadequate opportunities for kids who age out of the system, 
and not enough resources for kids who turn 18. It was a hot mess. But wait, there's more. Francois also discovers that a lot of foster kids struggle with paperwork and IDs, which makes it super hard for them to get and keep a job. I mean, seriously, it's like the whole system is designed to make their lives harder. That's when Francois has his big idea. He's going to do something to help as many foster kids as possible. And that's how Lala Landkind Cafe was born. The goal of the cafe is simple, to give foster kids jobs and teach them important life skills that they might not have learned while in the foster care system. Because when life gives you lemons, sometimes you gotta make some lemonade. So how does the cafe work? Well, here's the scoop. The La La Land Kind Cafe is an actual cafe. Francois could have picked any kind of establishment, but he picked a coffee shop, and he had his reasons. He decided on the coffee shop idea because the job is relatively easy to do and doesn't require more skills than an average foster youth can offer, at least at the point of their employment. While it is a non-profit organization, it is also a real workplace, so certain protocols are followed. After a foster youth applies for a job at the cafe, they would then pass through the interview stage before being hired. Once hired, they become interns and start out by making $10 an hour. The first thing they are taught is how to assist at the cafe, and they are trained on what it takes to be a part of the organization. This involves lessons on diligence, showing up, taking accountability, being early, and other lessons that they might not have had the opportunity to learn. The first La La Land Kind Cafe was opened in 2019 in Lower Greenville Avenue, a small neighborhood in Dallas, and at first, 10 foster youths were hired right off the bat. However, Francois soon realized that it wasn't going to be easy for the interns to combine the training with their jobs. It took a while, but the La La Land Kind Cafe team finally came up with a solution. To maintain the much needed balance, Francois and his team hired non-foster youths to run the coffee shop while the interns were put through an eight-week training program. Each intern undergoes this training, and upon completion, they have two options. They can either stay and work at any of the other cafes around town, or they can hit the road and find a job somewhere else, with the help of any of the directors. Now, there are more than three locations in Dallas, and the cafe has expanded to LA, Houston, and Santa Monica, while a few others are still in the works. Contrary to what many people think, the interns are not trained to be dependent on the cafe. With their salaries, they are encouraged to get apartments and live their lives as independently as each person can. The cafe just helps improve their chances of being truly independent and offers assistance to anyone in need of it. So how does the Lala Landkind Cafe make money, even though they're technically an NGO to the average Joe? They're just your regular old coffee joint. They still sell coffee and sweet treats just like any other cafe. And let me tell you, they're killing it in the sales department. And why, you ask? Well, it's simple. Their coffee is top-notch, and their restaurants are stunning. I'm talking about beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces that'll make you feel like you're in paradise, like nothing you've ever seen in a regular coffee shop. Francois, who is big on hospitality, passed on this trait to each of the interns, so their customer service is one of the best there is. Naturally, all these attributes make customers come back with friends and more friends. In return, the cafe makes more sales and more money, and everyone is happy. Apart from sales, the coffee shop has a couple of private investors who also provide financial support. Furthermore, the La La Land Kind Cafe has received many generous donations from people who are inspired by Francoise's vision. In 2021, he was invited on the Kelly Clarkson Show, and not only did Kelly donate $5,000 to the cafe, but Shaquille O'Neal promised to stop by the cafe on his next trip to Dallas. The cafe also has a TikTok account with over 6 million followers and hundreds of millions of likes. This definitely adds a few thousand dollars to their accounts per year. The establishment has been expanding since its inception in 2019, and a huge reason is that it resonates with so many people. So, it's safe to assume that financial issues are probably not an imminent problem for them. One of the first foster youth employed by the cafe was Katie Randall, and she was recently interviewed about the effects La La Land Kind Cafe has had on her. She entered the foster care system when she was 16, and by the time she aged out, she had been in four different foster care homes. She was on her own for the first year, until she was introduced to Francois at 19. 
She talked about how hard it was for her to learn responsibility and accountability, but after a tough learning curve, she's finally better for it. Randall's still holding it down at one of the Texas cafes, but she's got her sights set on bigger things, college, and becoming a general manager. And she's not the only one. There are other foster youths whose lives have turned around thanks to Francois's NGO. Francois Rehani seems too good to be true, and many people get stuck figuring out if he has ulterior motives or if he really just wants the world to be a better place. The fact remains that Francois had a better chance of being richer from running his Hawaiian restaurant or selling cars, but he chose service to humanity. Just like their motto says, it is important that we all normalize kindness, and people like Francois Raihani are a reminder that being kind is all of our responsibility. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time.